This is Master Gia with Jen and Sylvia Saska at Monster Mania in New Jersey. Any moments that really, like, stick in mind from shooting? You know, the first time we did some of the creature stuff that was similar to what David did, I, I was blown away. I mean, we had Masters Effects, and Steve Kostansky was actually our head creature designer, and we worked with somebody called Twisty Troy, who's this great uh, creature suit guy, and the stuff he can do with his body was, like, unbelievable. When we got into the body horror, and there's this one scene we called The Strange Room, and it is insane it is so insane everybody was like you're gonna have to cut the scene for the movie you'll never be able to pull it off you'll never i'm like this is my most favorite scene <laughs> and it is the most effective scene it's the scene when people usually have to step out of the room there even people who are working on it i turned off the movie at that and finished my work later so it was cool it's nice to have a, a movie that gives you nightmares that's so <laughs> funny because my mo favorite moments were the quiet ones i like that we both started and ended with lauren not being able to talk yeah. So it was all like miming and very quiet, subtle acting. And there is a moment between Laura and Haneke, who plays Chelsea, her best friend, uh, right before stuff happens at the end. I'm being vague, but there is a beautiful personal moment between the two of them. And they have a Jen and Sylvia conversation. They say, you know how many girls would kill to be where we are? It's going to be your line next, and that means it's going to be your original film, not a remake next. Oh, it's so personal, I could die. <laughs> This being a Cronenberg, well, based on a Cronenberg film, how the gore content has to be amazing, oh correct? Oh my God, Ins I've never gotten away with this before. Like, so there are times that there, we had challenging days. It's a hard movie to pull off, but I'd look at people and be like, did anyone creatively say no to you about anything? And they'd be like, yeah, actually, no. I'm like, yeah, take it. Go wild, because you'll never get this chance again. <laughs> <laughs> We've been waiting to get back into body horror since American Mary, and right, I think the right. fans have too. And we didn't just get back into body horror. We like dove right in, and there's at least two things that have never been seen before, and we mean Japanese horror as well. Ooh. So yeah. that is shit. the bar high. There's one thing in the strange room that you can't unsee. Yeah. <laughs> Tristan Risk. Love Tristan Risk. How, uh, you guys, she's your muse as, Fangor yes. as she was called on Fangoria. So much so. I feel like we summoned her when we had a coven in high school because she's too perfect to exist. She never <laughs> says no. She's like, can we push this farther? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and what about Laura Vandervoot? How was it working with her? Oh, my God. Laura Laura's amazing. We met her for something else, and I watched her get attacked by a hive of ants. And she was being professional, but she was also fighting the ants. And I couldn't stop thinking, what if she was in Ravage? <laughs> She's so cool. She's so watchable. And I think because people are so hung up on what she looks like, they never see what she is as an actress. So we, oh, we put her through hell. We rip her fucking face off in this. <laughs> and it's amazing because she acts so powerfully with her eyes and her everything. I think, uh, I think it's going to be hard for us to get to work with her again after this because she's going to have so many big Marvel jobs where it's nice and clean and she's not doing weird tentacle stuff. But I was grateful that she wanted to play with us. Ooh, weird tentacle stuff. I don't know. There's a tentacle. There could be. She's so talented. And the funny thing is that, you know, she's so beautiful and people always just cast her as beautiful and they don't realize that she's just a badass. I mean, she's like a black belt. She's very... Uh, ready to be soaked in blood. Yeah. There's never a moment where you're like, okay, Laura, the blood's coming up. She's like, I think it should be more. I can do more. I can have it oh, worse. Oh, that's awesome. Even with, uh, I, everyone saw Rue Moore, the cover with that beautiful effect from Master's right, Effects right. or part of her face is kind of torn and re-put together. Mm -hmm. She was so into playing that. She had nothing wrong with being a little bit ugly, which is unusual because often uh, actors... <laughs> <gasps> well, oh, Charlize Theron in Monster and be like, oh, I had to be unbeautiful. Oh, oh, it's such a challenge. But for her, she's like, I'm so tired of just being beautiful. There's so much more to her than just what meets the surface. Yeah, and she really pushed it. There is a scene with the mouth prosthetic. We wanted to do something, and the, the artists were like, we can't do that. It's going to back up, and it's going to spray everywhere. And I look at Laura. I was like, Laura, if we put too much in, it's going to back up and spray everywhere. And she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. And we ended up giving her the... She, we did the Wakanda sign because we had to have because she had no mouth and she had to have a sign if she was actually in danger because we thought she was dying. The rest of the cast thought she was dying. I knew she was acting, I think. 
We hope. The brundle fly scene. The brundle fly the brundle scene. Fly. Brundle fly scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Allusions to every Cronenberg That's film, awesome. our own films, and also a lot of favorite like seventies horror films as well. That's awesome. Seventies was always my favorite period in horror movies. Me too. Seventies and eighties is the shit. And then in the nineties, I'm like. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt Cobain died. It was a rough yeah, decade. It was a rough shitty. decade. It was shitty. It was yeah. shitty. <laughs> So I, Bren Fangu, you guys had a very predominantly uh, female uh, crew working on. I think that's pretty awesome. Did that come about on purpose or by accident? Or by accident. Of- I was literally just hiring the best people. I don't like to come in, and I am so against quota hiring. I, I will not hire a minority or a woman or whoever just because I'm being pushed in that direction because there are a lot of women and minorities and even white dudes that have busted their ass to be the way or where they are. And we're just looking for the best people that had the right chrome. Cronenberg sensibilities. If someone didn't know who David was and didn't know his work, they were not on that set. There was no place for them because it was all about making something that would, you know, elevate him and celebrate him. We had a completely female uh, DP and camera team, which is pretty much unheard of. We had uh, Paula Fairfield, who's the Emmy Award uh, winning sound designer from Game of Thrones, come on. Oh my God, all of our post team was basically women. We had, we had some dudes, but also they were very sweet dudes. Like, they were dudes that weren't like, oh, this is a woman thing. They're like, yeah, this is amazing that we're talking about a female story, and we have females around telling that story. Yeah, it, uh, our DP was Kim Durko. Our uh, steady cam operator came back from Vendetta, Tammy Jones, and she's amazing. Uh, Paula Tunchuk was our other camera. And it was so cool. Oh, and not only had Laura not really worked with women directors before, but a full female camera team. And like, I think we had maybe three guys that were heads of departments and everyone would be like, you have so many chicks here. And like, I totally didn't even notice. We are just talking about weird shit. It just happened. Did you hire all women on purpose? No. Are there only women here? Oops. <laughs> All right, so last thing I want to talk about, moving a little away from Rabbit, is uh, your Black Widow comic book. Ah! I've been loving it because I, it's, she's always been one of my favorite characters. Aww. And uh, I've just been enjoying it. Have you guys been enjoying writing her? Oh, it's the best time of our lives. I just wanted to give everybody the gnat that everyone wants to see because she's been so held back, and I can relate to her. I feel really held back. I feel like I can be killing everyone on Madripoor. Well, the truth is, The Black Widow Killing Pedophiles is a feel-good story 2019. 2020, it's a feel-good story of all time. I hope they make it the second movie. I would like to see that. You don't want to miss issue three, and issue four is going to really upset people. Yeah. Issue four is really great. Flame Jen. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time thank to do you. this.